So you have the blue hymnal, so we'll sing the hymn uh, number 702 in a couple minutes. Before we do that, though, a couple uh, announcements, and we'll begin with prayers as well. One prayer we will include for Sharon, J.D. Sharon is here, for Sharon's great nephew, who is two and a half weeks old and going through a surgery, and a couple things happen in his life, so we'll include Sharon and her family. We'll also include Samantha, uh, whose mom passed away. We've been praying for Samantha and her family. We also include a special announcement today. Uh, Mr. Keith Lewis from Oklahoma is here today. And Keith is here as part of the DC coordinator search process. Keith is over there next to Dr. Schuller. And uh, tomorrow after chapel, uh, students, faculty, staff are invited to stay after chapel tomorrow uh, to rail through with questions <laughs> and pin them to the wall at any point. We will sing the hymn, I will bring life number 702 uh, from the blue hymnals, and we will rise for the fifth verse, the last verse, we'll stand and we'll stay standing for the reading of the gospel.
me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, God. Let's do the first video now. Sorry, I'm not going to do it. I am hungry. I am famished. I never have the energy I need. I am unhealthy. I am starving. I am malnourished. I am weak. I am looking for strength in the wrong places. That, in short, reflects us, the gospel, as uh, a pendulum. Let's call it March Madness, just because it's a day for March Madness, where there's that kind of uh, panic among the disciples. You remember the question Jesus asked? Jesus uh, goes up the mountain and he sees all these people coming to him, and he asks Philip a question. And we're going to say about you have you have these sheets. One is well copied, the other is kind of sort of the first verse is a canon verse. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd, this is from John chapter six, a little before Shelley read to do. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, I would like to be Philip at this moment. Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this, John tells us. He asked us only to test Philip, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Eight months' wages, even a minimum wage, so a lot of money. And Philip says, we don't have the resources to feed these people, and so we're going to sit by it. Forgive me, but you're going to get three memory songs today uh, from an old vacation Bible school musical. And what you saw students say in this in this um, video is what the disciples probably experienced too. There's no way. There's no way I can do this. Bill said, "There's no way we can do this." They say to Jesus. In fact, in another gospel, they say, "Send them to a neighboring town." Um, and so this this first song bears too many. Whether you like it or not, you're going to sing it with me. It goes like this. I'll sing it first, and then I invite you to try it with me. The disciples in their hearts. And remember, as we walk through these songs, this is not about feeding people temporarily. This is about something much, much deeper, much, much more significant. As the church looks, and we look at one another and say, there's no way. There's no way that we can accomplish what God has called us to accomplish. So the disciples probably sang some hearts felt in their hearts a uh, song like this. It goes like this. There's too many mouths to feed. There's too many that we need. Send them Upon the grass to hear the teaching that the last word. 
you probably experience as Christians and leaders of the congregations. There's too many. And it's, and it's too much. And we can't do it. We don't have the resources. And we don't have the talent. We don't have the ability. And John tells us that Jesus asked Philip that question because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. One of the great gospel messages today is that Jesus already knows what he's going to do here and now as well. So flip the page to the other side of the topic. Um, and we have this dramatic shift called the March Madness from eight months away to stand by enough to pay for the food for this group to, to Peter. Another of the disciples, John tells us, another of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Almost humorously, by the way. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? Can you picture that scene? Five thousand and probably many more. And Andrew comes up and says, Yeah, I know a kid's got a stickers mark. <laughs> does that happen at church council meetings? Yeah, it does. Does that happen at communions at Concordia? Yeah, it does. And look what Jesus does. And I, I'll propose to you this day that this kid with five loaves and two fish is me. And this kid with five loaves and two fish is you. One of Satan's greatest tricks is to say you are not good enough. You don't have students. You don't have enough resources. But this little kid comes up, and Andrew, for whatever reason, ushers, as Shari mentioned earlier in this week, ushers. Did you mention that earlier in this week, or was that last Early childhood. Early childhood practice. You weren't there, sorry. <laughs> Andrew serves as an usher for this little kid, and his five loaves and his two fish. And on one hand, that's me. I don't have enough, but what I have. You have what little you have. You give to the Lord, and then look what look what the Lord does to it. Uh, you can sing with it if you like to read music. Uh, if you want to listen the first time through, I invite you to do so. But remember, we're, we're talking about that story. We're talking about something much deeper, much more significant of what God has to do. The other side of doing a song like this in a vacation Bible school musical for kids is that you can say to the girl or boy playing this little kid with five loaves and two fish. I don't want you to sing this well. Don't sing it well. Sing it for them. What a pressure it is. <laughs> sing it. Sing it so that people are waiting for dying to what you have to say. And this is this is the song. Jesus teaches us. 
us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And then there is this uh, phrase that Jesus used when the disciples celebrated Passover. There's no, there's no communion story in John's house for the Passover week. <coughs> Why? What is John trying to tell us there? Because communion is all over John's gospel. But in the past, there's just a washing of feet. Why? Why is that for John? Because of these words of Jesus. And I'll just say a brief uh, words where Jesus says, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. <laughs> bread he gave them.